When you first download D7, D7.2.exe is going to be located inside a zip file, inside a zip file. And the reason for that is because it gets around a lot of antivirus filtering when you download it. So basically you'll just launch the executable and it's going to start downloading some re required components that it needs. Now I have my key, my product key registration um, in a file here, but you'll have that in an email. You're going to want to copy and paste the uh, registration name and the product key exactly as they're listed in the email. You don't want to type any of them in. Um, you want to ensure that there are the, you know, the spaces and the dashes and the product key. That is important. And it is bound to the registered name. So if you change this, the product key will not work. You're also going to need to enter in your uh, dcloud credentials which you would uh, give to me to create your dcloud account. It's probably important that you test this just to make sure everything's going to work before you try to proceed. Finally we need to enter in a technician password and this is used primarily to encrypt your D7 configuration when uploading to dcloud or your FTP server if you choose to configure one and it's also used in other various uh, D7 password protected functions. Now click OK and we should have the license agreement. If you agree, D7.2 should launch and now download all updated components. Okay, now we have a fresh launch of D7.2. We'll go to check for updates. It never hurts to do this. D7.2 is designed on first launch to actually update absolutely everything anyway, uh, except for the test pack. So we're going to take a look here around the update screen as long as I have you here. We have a recheck for updates. This will bypass any cache. This actually uses an FTP based download to check for updates whereas the standard default check is HTTP and sometimes that file can get cached on like on a technician computer particularly where D7.2 was launched multiple times. We also have delete IE temp internet files which will fix some update issues particularly that file caching I was just talking about. Um, should there be a problem with D7.2 actually updating itself, we have a direct download button which will just download the plain zip file. You can always extract the executable from the zip, from the zip, over the top of the existing executable. And then we have our Keteran options and that's a subject for another time. And of course the update button. Now we have our local release notes. You're going to have a revision history of defunct. You're also going to have revision histories on the web where you can check the revision history actually before you download. You can also look at custom apps history and Keter and profile history. Then we also have the D72 release notes and video on the DMZ. We've got a lot of internal functions populated, but not really any custom apps. All of these are internal functions that D72 is capable of performing. Um, we have our 991 configuration here. If you use 991, that's another subject. You can actually go to D72 config, and we can go to custom apps. Now we, here we have our interface for custom apps. You can assign an app or function to a section, and these are the sections on the various tabs that we're talking about here. Notice that this is the label, so you can name this whatever you want. And that will give you your name up here. Maintenance 1 actually is this guy. So if you change this, um, it will rename this. So you have your categories named the way you want them. I tend to organize them a certain way. So I have, I have certain names for them. Also up here we have custom menus where uh, you can define uh, your tools and scripts menu drop downs right here. And then we have auto runs where you can run custom apps or functions every time D72 starts up, every time it starts a session, which is the first time it will run on a PC, and every time it ends a session, which is the last time it should run on a PC. And that's what you should be doing 
Every time you're finished with D7 on a PC, you should be ending the session. If you choose no option here, that's fine. Just click this button. It will clean up uh, various files and registry settings that D7 has been using. And um, yeah, of course, fill in the options there um, for cleanup. Now, back to our custom apps. We have our default apps. We have user created apps. This is anything that you create. We have our downloads from dCloud and then you have your dCloud shared, which will show you apps on dCloud that other people have contributed. Now we have our internal functions. We have our MISC. Down here at the bottom we have all functions. Then we have some more categories over here, which are the functions bro bro broke down into categories if you want to just browse the category. Or you can go to all functions if you sort of know what you're looking for and you can search for it here. Like I can do, let's just search for update and see what pops up. We've got Windows update settings, deleting update backup directories, delete update temp files, install updates, repair Windows update, and update Adobe Flash. So we've got all of those results just from typing uh, the filter here. Once you find something like this, double click and that will automatically put it in the list over here. Go to add app slash function, which enables drag and drop. This will give you just a little warning message that it enables a drag and drop. And because it makes a few things a little finicky, we recommend not leaving this enabled. So it will bring up the menu where you can select your functions or your D72 default apps. And essentially, you can just right click, drag and drop them wherever you want them to be. And of course, you can also drag and drop them in between your um, boxes here on the tab and then move them up and down as you see fit. Once you close that window, everything goes back to normal. The drag and drop between boxes is not uh, functional anymore. Once you figure out the items that you want, you can check them, save an auto mode profile, and it will always be loaded when you start D7. Or you can have other auto mode profiles that are already there. There's a couple of them that are already predefined, and they'll, they'll select a few things from what's already here. So you can use those in addition to the default. Basically, to run an app, you can just double click it. Again, you had the right click options. You can run the app, um, run the app, ignoring any command line parameters, which will generally stop any automation that it's configured to do. Um, post processing is a subject for another time. You can go to the app's website, download page, open the app's directory um, if you need to get to a file in there manually. Um, again, configure the app or function, which will take you directly to the app's configuration. The app's configuration here lots of options here it's definitely a subject for another video it's something that we've we've actually ha have videos on on the uh, DMZ at D support online and we have a couple more uh, options you can just remove the app from the list and of course then you can open that window back up and enable the drag and drop if you want to run everything that is checked use the start auto mode button. This is gonna run everything in order, top to bottom, left to right, that is checked. If at any time you need to run uh, any particular app or function a second time, all you have to do is recheck it. You don't have to start and stop the auto mode again. The current item that is running, as soon as it finishes, it will restart the list and go down and run the checked items. And if you've rechecked anything, that will run again. Before I go, I also did need to mention that most of these items are clickable. Anytime you see the little hand um, on the mouse cursor appear, you can generally click on that item and uh, it will do some sort of task. Um, you can click on alerts, you can double click these, um, like this right here that tells you the Microsoft Customer Experience Improvement Program is enabled. If you double click it, it will pop open the dialog where you can disable that. You want. This is also uh, on the tweaks tab. You can do this automatically uh, here.
But again, there's a lot in D7-2 that you need to know about. There's a lot you'll need to go through. So definitely take advantage of all the video content that's available. Take advantage of the online manual. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you liked it, check out the DMZ exclusively on dsupportonline.com. DMZ is the D72 member zone which contains quick tip videos such as this one, extensive D72 training videos, malware removal videos and tips, custom configurations for D72, discounts on additional training, and premium members get three hours of D72 personal training at no extra cost. So check out the DMZ, dsupportonline.com slash DMZ.